Cursor 1.0 is here and it brings with it four features that I'm excited about, so let's jump straight in and try some of them out. First up, Bugbot. This feels like step one in Cursor's response to tools like GitHub Copilot, Claude Code, and Jules. Here on GitHub, I have a PR for one of my projects, and as you can see, Cursor.com bot has left a comment telling me that we might have a few potential bugs and issues. We have a prompt typo and length issue and a description of the issue itself, and then also where that issue is occurring. And we also have an incorrect fallback title causing user confusion. So what Bugbot is, is it's essentially going into our PRs, looking at the diffs, and it's reviewing the code for any potential bugs and issues using the exact same AI that powers cursor agent and also the same pricing as max mode. Now what's interesting is it doesn't actually go in and fix the issue for you. Instead you click the fix in cursor button here. As you can see it opens up cursor with a pre-fill prompt that should hopefully fix that issue and it also marks out the relevant line in the file where that issue was occurring but of course you could come in here and manually fix it yourself as well. You set this up on cursor.com, go to integrations, you should see Bugbot. You connect your GitHub account and you can choose the repositories where you want this to run in. As you can see, you can also choose a spend limit up here, but there's a free trial for seven days when you sign up at the moment. And as you can see down at the bottom, you can also have some preferences on how you want this to run. You can choose to only run it when it's mentioned. So if you write Bugbot run in the comments, then it will come in and run instead of doing it automatically. You can choose for only running once. So it only does it once per pull request. And if you have new commits to fix those issues, it doesn't then run run again and you can also hide the no bugs found comments because if it doesn't find any bugs in your PR it will leave a comment saying that it hasn't found any bugs and some of you might find that a little bit annoying. I really like this flow particularly on projects where it seems like the AI never fully understands what you're trying to do. This way you can be quite active in making manual adjustments and further prompting to try and fix the issue. If you're looking for a more hands-off agent where it does it all for you this next feature is for you. I'm talking about background agents. This allows you to spawn off asynchronous agents that can edit and run your code in a remote environment. To start one, all we need to do inside of Cursor is press Command E and that will open up this floating prompt window, which is the background agent control panel. I'll paste in the prompt that we got from the previous bug and then I'll also add in that context of the topic maker.ts file. As you can see, we can select our model like normal and that it's running in the background. I'll change the branch as well to version 0.5. Now when I hit send, as you can see, it spins up a new background agent. And if I close this window and press command E again, that's where you'll be able to see all of your background agents. If I click into this, you can see the terminal of it setting up the actual environment. And what you might notice is it does say that it's successfully connected with GitHub. So you do need to make sure that your cursor is connected to GitHub so that you can pull down those repositories as it doesn't actually send your code from your machine. It uses the repository from GitHub, clones that, and then makes the changes to that. What's really cool though is as you just saw there, it actually opens up a remote IDE session for you where you can actually see it prompting the background agent itself. So it's almost like a user using cursor, but the agent itself is doing all of it for you, which is super cool because it also means that you can actually come in here and add in your own follow-up instructions as well if you see it going in the wrong direction and you want to make a few changes. What it also means as well is when you want to set up your environment, you can go into the remote IDE, install what you need, and then save it as a snapshot so the next time it creates an agent, it has all of the configuration that you want. Once it's completed its task in the remote IDE, you see we get a green tick. We can also review the changes that it's made. We could add in some further prompts if we want it to do a bit more for us or we notice it hasn't actually fixed the issue. And then we can create a pull request, check it out locally, or import it into the local chat. Now, if you weren't in the remote IDE, all you need to do is press Command E, and then you can click here and you can see we have some options like check out locally, create pull request, copy request ID, and loads of other things. It also creates a branch so we could copy that, look at it in GitHub, and then create our own PR. I honestly think this is one of the smoothest UIs I've seen for a background agent, as it's just a remote cursor instance where the agent is using cursor like a human. That means that going in and making changes and prompting it further all feels super familiar. Now it is worth noting at the moment this is in beta which does mean that you need to turn off cursor privacy mode so you need to be happy that the code base prompts and telemetry might be sent to cursor to improve it. If you're not happy with that just wait a bit and they will get it working with the privacy mode on. Now you do also need to go to beta and just turn on background agent. If you want to find out a bit more about how you can configure the environment, head over to the documentation. As you can see, there's a base environment setup where you get the IDE instance connected and you can set it up there and save it as a snapshot. But there's also advanced ways where you can use a Docker file for the machine setup and everything gets saved in an environment.json, which you can see down here. So as things like your install command and the start command and also the terminals that you might want to be using. Now, one thing to keep aware of is security when using this. You should know that this is going to be running on Cursor's AWS infrastructure. The agents all have access to the internet so it could run something nefarious so you do want to be careful with that and you can see it auto runs all of the commands plus if you're using environment variables these are stored encrypted at rest in cursors database so do be aware of the security implications when you're using an agent like this
Moving on to the next feature, Memories. This will enable Cursor to remember facts from conversations and reference them in the future. I'm super excited for this as I hope it solves some of the pain points that I have when using agents. As you can see here, I say create a to-do React app and then it tries to use MPX and create React app, which has been deprecated for years. Hopefully now if I give this a prompt that says always use bun and bun x instead of npm and when creating a React app unless a framework is specified, use v. I've also said save this memory, but in the future you probably won't need to do that. I'm just making sure that it works for this demo. If I hit send on that, we should see that the memory gets updated. There we go, our memory's been updated with always use bun and the instructions that I set. If I give this the same prompt now to create a React to do app, hopefully it uses my memory there. And as you can see, there we go, it's using bun and it's also using V, which is super awesome. This is gonna be really handy for scenarios like this. Now it's worth noting that these are stored per project and also on an individual level. But what's really cool is apparently if you're working on a project with a team, Curse can actually see that memories for that project and it can learn to help you out from them. The fourth feature that I'm super excited for is that Cursor now has MCP one-click install and OAuth support. They even have a list of officially recommended MCP servers on their website. And you can see developers can create an add to Cursor button, so it's super easy to install your MCP server for everyone else. If I click add Notion to Cursor, it wants to open up Cursor. You can see we can just click install here, and then we have a needs login prompt. If I click needs login, that will want me to open up Notion, log in, and that will handle all of the authentication for me. And it's just a much nicer flow than this used to be. That was the four features that I was most interested in, but there's a few more things in this release that you might be interested in. The agent will now work in Jupyter Notebooks. There's richer chat responses that can actually you render mermaid diagrams and markdown tables and finally you can now see how much ai you're using with the cursor dashboards let me know what you think in the comments down below subscribe and as always see you in the next one